hundred percent. It did not look this steep from a distance. We ought to camp out here tonight, you know? Make a little fire, sing songs.
up ahead. I always wanted to poke through. This station's under the protection of the corporate compliance crew. You a marauder? Cause me and my sunshine, that's my gun if you were wondering, we don't take kindly to marauders. A coherent enough response, I reckon. Must be true. You're clear, but I would caution you against pressing on ahead. This station's plumb crawling with marauders, you know. Hey, we're here to help, long as the paperwork's done and the pay's good. Me and Sunshine are doing exactly what we've been tasked with, and that's guarding these big old devil's peak horns. There is nothing I'd enjoy more, but the C3s play it by the book, usually. Go petition the boss man. Maybe you can convince him to alter my duties. You ought to talk to my crew. They're guarding a small barracks to the southeast by the edge of the mountain. See that path that runs underneath that giant archway? Follow it on down. There's a little station near the cliff. You'll find the... Incoming! Attack! 
Yes, yes, I can see you. Come here and talk to me. Face the intercom. I can't tell if you're brave or simply touched in the head. What in the galaxy are you doing sniffing around my station? Unless you are, in fact, trying to suicide by Marauder? Nice and coherent. Good. Take it you're not with the Marauders, then. By the hand of fate and my own cunning skill, I run this station. The Marauders may have other plans, and since my hired hands have clearly turned idle, it appears I have need of you. As my newest contractor, you may call me the Broker. Excellent! I have a good feeling about our business relationship. I'm sure it will go much more smoothly than with those unscrupulous mercenaries I hired. I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the Marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. Too many, considering I hired a bunch of no-good mercs to keep them out in the first place. Already, they've caused considerable damage to the station's property. If they take down the broadcast equipment, I'll be out of a job. Aside from the bits I'll be paying you, I trade in secrets, valuable ones for my vocation. I'm sure you can come up with something you might like to ask me about in person once I'm safe. Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. This ought to square our debt, one hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But I admit, I do wonder why you ventured here at all. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why 
in the nebula. Are you here? Ah, yes, our little chat on the intercom. You're looking for the premier broker for all of Monarch, which you knew was me, clearly. Phineas must have sent you. He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts, always. Are you fibbing? Be honest. You said that in a way that was almost believable. I take offense to that. Look, okay. Just, it might take me a while this time. I am awaiting but a single incoming transmission containing the information we desire. But MSI and the Iconoclasts are clogging the airwaves from Stellar Bay and Amber Heights. In their war against each other, they're scrambling each other's outgoing transmissions. Luckily, however, the Iconoclasts have now gone silent. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Then you've my impressed gratitude. Still, we need to get MSI off the airwaves. I will leave the means to that particular end under your discretion. Exactly what I was thinking. They hurt us all with their pettiness. Which, of course, has inadvertently affected the incoming port and my livelihood. No, they're jamming the limited frequencies we have at our disposal. Nothing extraplanetary can get in or out until the frequency pollution thins out. The safest bet is to convince Sanjar and MSI to stop transmitting on their end. My former partner, Sanjar, transmits from his office in MSI's headquarters in the center of town. Don't let him try to fool you. While his messages might seem like gibberish, they are in reality coded business orders to off-world companies. I understand why he needs the bandwidth, but we had a deal and he's broadcasting ceaselessly. You do that, I'll be here waiting on the receiving end. Luck be with you. I have a feeling you'll be needing a pinch of it. Plus a vat of patience. Sure, you know where to find me if you need me.
Thank you again for retrieving the bolt. It's every bit as complex as I'd heard, but I'm up to the challenge. Anyway, what can I do for you? You're just as rigid as the old executive committee. Why, we've hardly been able to get a clear message out until recently. When Graham finally shut up. Praise the architect for that. It isn't easy keeping a town like Stellar Bay afloat, especially without the board's backing. We need that frequency to reach our trading partners. Indeed. That's why it's imperative that MSI be reinstated onto the board. If we can find proof that one of the companies on the board is also active on Monarch, that'll give me all the leverage I need. You have my word. <laughs> <laughs> 